Hello everyone. Uh, this is the first video on uh, petrophysics. Um, just to recap from the previous videos, uh, we managed uh, to digitize the logs uh, using Petrel. After that, you you do your analysis uh, to find out where is your um, gas and where is your oil and where is your water. You do that from the CNL density. So, for example, here we have well three. Uh, let's say in, in horizon three, or we call it layer three, we have hydrocarbon here. And you do the same for all the the wells. Uh, in this case, I have four wells. Okay. So um, the next thing you do is you look at your contour map. So we, we in this in this map we see that uh, we have well three, well one, and well four. They all on the same plane, and we have well two uh, on different plane. And well one is is the highest one in altitude because it's closer to the to the top circles. Then you have. They have one and you have two and you have one, two, three. So this is the second deepest, the third, and this is the deepest one. So this this alignment gives you an idea on well correlation and how to place the wells. So you can see here that when you match the depth, you have 5,200, 5,200. So the highest is well one. Then you have well three and well four. This is well four, and the deepest is well two. So this is your correlation for the four wells. Then after that, you you go back to your wells and and you just assign the the zones that have hydrocarbon or or water so for example here in, in horizon 3 well 3 we have hydrocarbon so we go to well 3 horizon 3 is these blue lines so here we have a hydrocarbon so this is this is layer 3 layer 3 goes up and the same layer for well one is at a depth that is shallower so if we go to if we go to well one and we go to horizon three we're gonna see we also from the CNL density that we also have hydrocarbon. So this just confirms that in in, in horizon three, the uh, the green one that we have hydrocarbon. So we do the same thing for horizon three for well four and the horizon three for well two <clears throat> and we do this for all the zones until we get a picture like that okay I, I want you just to focus on the the tracks themselves not the connecting lines like here or here okay so if we just focus on the tracks the red is, is gas we we determine that from the the size of the balloon effect and the CNL density log. If it's too large, then it's gas. If the separation in the CNL density is small, it is it is oil. And you do the same for for water zones from the the RTRXO logs. Okay. So the next thing is that to determine because 
you see this is a contour map and uh, the the layers are not on uh, they're not a plane they go up and down following the topography so we need to determine where does the the gas be okay the the thing we uh, we know gas on top because usually like gas because of density gas goes on top we have a gas cap and this is the the shallowest bay zone so the gas is there but we don't know where does the gas stop and where does the oil start also we don't know where does the oil stop and the water start we don't know the contacts the the level of the gas oil contact and the oil water contact okay we do that from the the pressure depth gradient okay so we have a, a pressure depth gradient for zone one here i divided uh, the the reservoir into three zones we have this zone one and this is zone two and this is zone three these are these zone two and three they connect into one zone because here we have an intrusion we have a cell so i'm gonna talk about zone one which is this so in zone one here we have a gas oil contact and oil water contact okay so if we if we take the pressure let's say for for well for well one if we take the pressure versus depth gradient of the pay zone because we know in in zone one and in, in well one we only have one zone so if we take the pressure gradient which is this only the depth for that horizon for that layer layer 3 and the pressure and we plot it and the same thing for the same zone uh, well 3 we also take the the pressure from this point until this point which is from 5 750 you can see this is this is above 5.8, 5, 5.750, and it lasts until below 5.8, which is 5.850. And the same thing, well for, which is this zone, above 6,000 and below 6,000, 5.9 and 6.35. And the pressure so here we have the this ones are for well one and we have some points see we have some points in well three that are on the same plane we can draw a, a straight line so drawing a straight line means that the pressure gradient between well 1 and well 3 here we have well 1 and well 3 the pressure gradient until this depth does not change so if the pressure gradient until this depth does not change it means it's the same fluid after the depth of 5830 which is this one 5830 the pressure gradient changes here at this point the pressure gradient see this point the pressure gradient the slope changes from 5830 so this means that we have different fluid so this is our gas and at 5830 we start our 
at our 5810 we start our uh, we start our oil so once you do that you just uh, do a straight line and you get your gas oil contact you do the same uh, this is well one right okay so in uh, between well three and well two So this well, well three and uh, well four. So well three and well four, we have the same. Well four is here. We have the same gradient. It means we also have oil in well four, which is this this part. Below this part, it's the same. And at the end, some points in well four have the same gradient as in well 2 it means that they have the same fluid and we know from our log that well 2 is flooded with water so it means at this depth we have our oil water contact so that's how you determine your contacts another thing to notice is that this straight line it does not mean that there is gas at this point and oil at this point no you have to think about it as layers these are shale it means they are impermeable to gas and oil so the gas goes up and goes down it does not mean that there is gas in these places and oil in these places okay thank you very much